real quick, drop a comment. How many rounds is it gonna take to chop through this fence post? Let's find out. It's the Atlas Apollo. You can fit so many bullets in this bad boy. <laughs> the Atlas Apollo, slicker and spit. <laughs> All right, for real now. Um, Atlas. <laughs> All right, guys, for real though, we're gonna talk about the Atlas Apollo today. We're gonna put a thousand rounds for this baby. Let's go ahead and. Get a quick zero before we dive into all the drills that we're gonna run. All right guys, I'm just gonna throw a white paster up here real quick and check the zero. I shot this a little bit uh, yesterday and it was pretty decently zero, but I didn't actually get a confirmed zero. So let's check this real quick. Um, we're about, let's see here, about 20 yards away now. Let's see what we can do. All right, I pulled one of those high right, Ugh. but I guess I pulled two of them high right. The rest of them are all pretty well stacked in there. That's gonna work. Let's go ahead and run you through what this gun is all about. Now the Apollo is Atlas's newest release, and this is a 4.6 inch barrel that is ported. All of the other Atlas guns out there, from the Erebus, the Athena, the Hyperion, the Chaos, all of these guns fit into some sort of a slot. And what Atlas decided to do with the Apollo is create a gun as if there were no divisions. So if you look back at like competition, a lot of guys, you know, they'll buy a gun specifically for one niche in the competition, one division in the competition, one competition that wanted to shoot, and they'll build the rest of the kit around that. And the Apollo really was designed to be, hey, this is what we would do if we could just build a really badass gun and we're not worried about any competition niches. This is just to be a good shooter at a good price point. If you're in the Atlas price point, you guys know. Um, but it's designed to be just a badass range gun and not be selected for any specific competition in general. That being said, it will still work for competition, but it will put you in an open division because we have these little barrel ports up here, okay? As you can see, we have two ports on either side of the barrel, two ports on the slide as well, and this also lines up with the EOS, which we just did a video on the other day. The EOS has kind of the same thing, but this is a commander size with a steel frame, very similar to the Ares, but it is designed more for the defensive, more for the, the concealed, um, even though it's a, amazing shooting double stack 2011 frame um, that's what this is designed for this right here is designed for anyone who just wants a badass gun to go shoot at the range um, this gun right here is a shooter it truly is and, that, and we've got a few rounds through it already we're gonna put another thousand rounds through it today but let's go ahead and compare some of the different features to these other guns that I have up here we already talked a little bit about the uh, EOS this is the other release kind of a sister release to this one this one's a four and a quarter, this one's 4.6 inch. So you can see this is a slightly longer barrel, okay? Both of them are ported. Uh, this one comes standard with a three, three and a half pound trigger, maybe a little bit over that, but it's more designed for your defensive gun. All right, this also has a shorter grip. So with the Apollo, we have the full Atlas uh, Alpha grips, which are coming down a little bit longer. You're, you have the ability to throw this uh, magwell on here and swap out the grip panel. So my perfect preferred choice with the grip panels on this is what I have here on my Erebus, a palm swell on the right side and a step grip on the left side. I love this setup because it fills up the right hand and allows my fingers to lay flat while also giving me a good um, swell for my left hand to fit in here. It just feels amazing. If you guys ever see me at a match or at the range, check this thing out because that really is the best feeling grip I've ever run. So this, you have that option. You can switch, switch out the, the uh, grip panels. I'm going to do this at some point as soon as I get some more grip panels in. It also comes standard with a competition trigger, which is just under two pounds and super, super crisp. I mean, there is no, <laughs> no take up there. The reset is that. I mean, it's, it's insane. The reset on this trigger is ridiculous. Now, you guys know I don't like 
care about the reset. I really don't. I don't like to focus on the reset, but it is there. It's a short reset, a very crisp break, um, just under two pounds, and that allows you to be extremely accurate with it. Now, a couple other differences between the, let's go ahead and look at the Erebus between the Erebus and the Apollo. This is one of the questions I've gotten quite a few times. Which one should I get if I'm gonna shoot three gun uh, or open division and I wanna have a ported or comped gun for that division? Now, the Erebus is a race gun. It is designed for competition. Uh, it's also one of the best shooting guns. It's the best shooting pistol I've ever run. I love shooting this gun. So this one has a big port up here. It has the extra weight of having the full dust cover here, uh, the full rail the block up front where the port is, or the compensator is, and it really is just designed to be a race pistol. It's a Formula One race car. That's what this is for. Uh, it also has the competition trigger. This one, however, does not have that extra weight up front. So the good part about that is you're gonna have a faster order time. It's gonna be a little bit shorter wait time, and it's about $1,000 cheaper than the Erebus. With this one, you also get backup iron sights if you so choose. That way you can have, obviously, the backup. You can see the backups through the optic, just barely with this optic. But that being said, there is a slight difference. The way they shoot, we're gonna check that out later on. We're gonna do a little comparison between the two of them. But what this really closely compares to is the Athena. So the Atlas Athena and the Atlas Apollo, obviously they look similar because they're both a 4.6 inch gun. They both have backup iron sights. The only real difference is the Apollo is ported and the Athena is not. That's gonna be your big difference between the two of them. Otherwise, they shoot very similar. We're also gonna do a little comparison between the two and see how much of a difference the porting makes. It does make a bit of a difference. I'll give you a little spoiler there um, because it keeps a little bit flatter just because you're getting that jet out the top of the gun. So between these three guns, or these four guns, you can see there's similar similarities to each one. The Erebus has a comp, a little bit longer, a um, little bit more expensive. The uh, EOS also has the same style of porting. It is a shorter commander frame with a shorter barrel. And then the Athena is a basically the same gun, except that the Apollo is ported. So there's your compare and contrast to these four guns. But let's go ahead and get after it because we got a lot of shooting to do. And I don't want to waste any more time talking about specs when it's really time to shoot. Now, how we're going to break this down is I have 250 rounds loaded up in these mags right here, and we're going to reload these four times. Now, G9 is an amazing ammo company. They've been a sponsor of mine for many years. They have the best defensive handgun ammo on the market. They have some incredible long range ammo, some phenomenal hunting ammo as well. And that's what I use for all of my videos. I also have some military ball ammo because we're going to test out your regular factory stuff. Now, the G9 that I'm running today is 115 factory ammo. It's nothing super special. Um, I got some Federal that we're gonna test out just to see how that stuff runs. Just some regular 115 Federal. Because the whole point of this gun is it will run regular factory ammo. You don't have to do anything special to your ammo and it's gonna shoot amazing with it. That's the goal. So that being said, we've got some targets that are printed off. We're gonna do some walk back drills, pushing this thing out to uh, probably 200 yards at least. Um, I've got a fence post up here that we're gonna chop in half and see how many rounds it actually takes to chop that fence post in half. And we're just gonna have some fun with it. So thank you guys for being part of this. Let's go ahead and shoot some stuff because I'm tired of talking and I really wanna get my finger working. All right, we have three clean targets here. We're gonna start off with the classic, a build drill, okay? Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of build drills because I think it is generally a waste of ammo and you can do a lot more with it, but we're also gonna do a whole lot of other drills and when we're gonna burn through a thousand rounds, we gotta add some billies in. So this is a great way to test how flat this gun shoots, see where I am as a shooter today, and instead of just doing one build drill, let's do three. I got three targets up. I was gonna do a build drill and then a Blake drill, but let's go ahead and do a triple billy to start things off with. Um, I think I got, yeah, we got 23 rounds here. It's an 18 round drill. We're just gonna do six, six, and six. Actually, no, I don't like that. We're gonna do seven, seven, and seven, make it a 20 round, 21 round drill. Um, I will add a bill drill in there as well. So let's just go ahead and start off with the billy and then we'll do my triple sevens drill to see what happens, okay? Um, am I cold starting? Yes, I had took, what, five shots? I had took, that's my Florida coming out. I took five shots earlier to zero, confirm zero, but otherwise this is a cold bill drill and we're gonna run this Let's see, everything feels good. Stand by. 
All right, we got three clean targets. And since we're gonna burn a bunch of ammo, we're gonna start off with a build drill. Now you guys know me, I'm not a huge fan of build drills, except for, I don't know. I, I would rather do a Blake drill. We're using those same six rounds with target transitions to get a little bit more, but we're gonna burn a build drill down first. This is a cold start build drill. I did shoot the five rounds earlier to get my zero confirmed, but let's go ahead and run this. And then we're gonna run my version of three sevens because we're gonna do seven, seven, seven on that for a 21 round drill, okay? All right, cold billy, let's see what we can make happen. Stand by. I shot seven rounds, I was thinking seven. Uh, seven rounds was 236, six rounds was 201. So first shot was a 113. I had a 113, a 19 split, 15, 12, 20, 22 split. Got a little trigger freeze or something in there. Um, and we dropped, I think it was on my very last round I pulled down to the Charlie. Let's go ahead and run a second build drill just for confirmation. We got one Charlie on there uh, out of seven rounds. Stand by. All right, so that was a 196, 117 first shot, nothing spectacular. And we threw three Charlies that time. All right, I'm gonna run 777 on three targets from the seven yard line. And I pasted up the middle target, everything outside the alpha. That way we can keep, kind of keep track of the hit. Stand by. That gun shoots super flat. That was a 497 for 21 rounds. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All in the alpha and one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 21 rounds in the alpha in five seconds. Now, a couple of thoughts on this gun. As I mentioned before, it is designed to shoot with whatever ammo you have. And that's what we're doing. We're shooting factory ammo right now. That being said, depending on the ammo that you run, you may see slightly different results as far as how much pressure is coming out of the top of the gun, which is gonna dictate how flat it keeps it. So if you're running a super light, Power factor ammo is something that's a 147 grain that's coming out like 850 feet per second. Really soft shooting ammo. You're not going to get as much gas coming out of the ports, out of the, the ports here that are going to keep that gun flat. It's going to make it shoot a little bit softer and it's just going to change your recoil impulse. So try a couple different types of ammo, especially if you're running a comped gun or a ported gun, to see which one feels the best for you. And it's not just feel either. Put it on a timer, put it on a target and see if there's a performance difference. Because what can happen is if you use a super soft shooting ammo, you're not getting the performance out of the comp or the ports, then that gun's not staying as flat, you may not be getting as fast splits because the cycle's not as fast, or you run super hot ammo, you're getting a lot of bounce, your springs aren't tuned properly, you're bouncing all over the target, maybe, just up to you, try it out. That's what I encourage you to do, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and run a Blake drill while we're here with three targets in front. We're gonna run two, two, and two. Stand by. All right, I dropped two Charlies there. Yeah, two Charlies on one on target three and one on target two. I was pulling off that target. So let's go ahead and run that again, but we're running backwards. That's a 199. Stand by. That one's better. I still pulled a Charlie in the middle target, a 177 on that one, so much better. Now, one of the keys to a Blake drill is maintaining good target transition. We've gotta get off target fast, we've gotta lead our, or with our eyes to the next target, we gotta be ready to shoot, and we wanna make sure that we're trying to keep those splits basically the same between those three. So we had a split of 19, a split of 23 between targets, a split of 18, a split of 21 between targets, and then a split of 19. So very consistent between targets. Let's go ahead, I got a couple extra mags here. Let's go ahead and run an X drill. Uh, X drill is one of my favorite quick little warm up drills. Um, and we actually can do an X drill reloaded. I like to use this drill a lot in classes because it doesn't take a lot of stuff and we can run a lot of people through it really quickly. And it's a macro drill, so we're testing multiple things. So we're gonna do two in the body, two in the head, two in the body, two in the head, a figure X here, with the reload and put two more in each head box. And we have the rounds for that, stand by. Oh God. 
All right, got a little bit sloppy with that reload. Um, the shooting itself was pretty decent, but this, the reload obviously was sloppy. So let's go ahead and hammer some reloads real quick, but we're gonna do that on steel over here. Now, if I had one tip for you on reloads, it would be shoot your shot, do your reload, and then make several shots afterwards. And especially if you can do some smaller targets because it's gonna force you to go back to good fundamentals. And one thing I see a lot of the times is when people do a reload, they skip over the fundamentals when they come back to the gun uh, because they're just trying to push the reload itself really fast. So let's go ahead and run one shot on the steel, hit the reload, and I'll run three of my little mini poppers here because that's gonna force me to be accurate. Stand by. Ah, that was not a good reload. <laughs> Let's see if we can do that again. The cool thing about a thousand round video is you guys get to see me at my best and you guys get to see me at my worst through the course of this thousand round. So let's go ahead, see if we can clean up that reload a little bit. Stand by. Three hits, I bumped my safety back on mid reload which is obviously not ideal but we did have good accuracy afterwards so let's go ahead and run that again ah oh, stand by ah ha, ha. sloppy on all counts there all right let's clean up this she's knit stand by Much better, still dropped one round on that last uh, plate. Good thing I got extra ammo here. That plane, this is the beauty of living in Florida and I have all these planes that fly over for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's the ATF. Comment down below if you think it's the ATF. That's a Cessna, that's the ATF. I like shooting guys. And this gun freaking runs. All right, time to go get some more mags and we'll get back after it. So I've got some printed off targets here. These are some drill targets from the internet. Uh, we've got Bear Solutions, we've got Manzano Tactical, we've got uh, the Pearl Drill from Carry Trainer. We got Point One Tactics, we got my drill, the, the um, Ergo Challenge. So we're gonna run a couple of these real quick. And what's fun about this is it just gives you some different courses of fire to play with. Most of them are very similar, including my own, the, or the Ergo Challenge, right? It's, it looks similar, it's shot similar, but each one has its own course of fire. So this is a great way to change up what you're doing on the range just to see where you are as a shooter. Um, and then you know, give you something to work towards. If you're not achieving the drill, Maybe run it a couple of times and figure out where you're failing. Okay, is it on your reload? Is it on your accuracy? Is it on your know, movement? Where is the failure point and how do we achieve the greatness that we're going for? So we've got um, Bear Solutions, my Ergo Challenge up here. And while I'm stapling these up, I wanna let you know, and I've got it down in the description as well. I am sponsored by Atlas Gunworks. Okay, I have been a long time shooter supporter of Atlas. They've been a supporter of mine for many years now. That being said, I will do my best to give you an absolutely, well, it's gonna be biased. Obviously it's gonna be somewhat biased, but I'm gonna give you a full breakdown of my thoughts on it. And which I think, what I think maybe you should get at the end of this. If you guys are in the market for a high in 2011, what you should be looking for, depending on what your needs are and which gun might fit that purpose. This is always a fun drill right here, the pearl drill. Um, it really focuses on you know, the, the order of engagement. Do you shoot from the bottom to the top, to the top to the bottom? And <laughs> it's just entertaining. It's like a little rocket ship. Um, we got Point One's tactics here. My boy Donovan, his cold standards are always a good time. Uh, and we're gonna run both of them. We got the V1 and the V2. So this one focuses a lot on accuracy and movement, which is always a good time. So we'll run both of these at some point. I'll probably put this one up here in a minute once we shoot these. So let's go ahead and back up and run some of these drills. All right, so the first one is the Bear Solutions drill. I'm using my buddy Hepner's mag with a little corgi on it. <laughs> I stole this from him in Utah. Accidentally, I offered to give it back. He's like, you know what? You should run that. 
So the bare solutions drill, we're doing five and five on either side and then three in the middle. Stand by. All right, let's go check this out. So I pulled one shot here uh, off the, the first rectangle, five in here, and then I put three in the middle. So definitely didn't get that perfect. Let's go ahead and top it off and run it again. Why not? We got the bullets. Now that first run on the bear standards was 651. Let's go ahead and see if we can clean that up a little bit. My reload was 193. So that was pretty rough for a uh, slide lock reload. Let's Let's see if we can push this down and get the accuracy we need. Stand by. Pulled my last shot, my very last shot. That was a 647. Um, wasn't happy with that run overall. Again, we had a little bit of hiccup on the reload, 205 reload. And I pulled the very last shot just low. So let's move on. Now, the Ergo Challenge is also shot at seven yards. So we're gonna run that now. Uh, four rounds in the center rectangle, two rounds in each squirrel, square, one round in each circle. Stand by. Pulled my second shot out of that, I believe, and Looks like I pulled the shots on the square as well. So let's see here. We've got uh, one, two, three, missed that one. I stacked both of these down low. I put them in the circles, but not in the squares. So let's go ahead and run it again. I'm gonna give myself two runs on each of these and see what we can come up with. Stand by. Oh, that one was sloppy too. I pulled a couple of shots there. Um, let's see, we pulled one, two out of the middle and then pushed the circle up high. So, gotta to top off some mags. And we're gonna run the Manzano tactical drill next. All right, so the Manzano is similar to some of the other ones, but we're gonna do five and five in the A zones, hit a slide lock reload and hit two in each of the head boxes for a total of 14 rounds. Seven yards for this one as well, stand by. All right, I think we are clean there. That is a 636. He asked me to do a sub six second, so I know I can achieve that. We have a five, five, two, and that one is actually not a line breaker as I thought it was. So we'll run it again because we can. Stand by. Still not clean. That was a 632, so pretty close to the same. Uh, with a big hiccup on the reload, and we dropped two rounds. This time it was, I think, first or second round here, and I pulled one just a little bit high when I was running this. All the head boxes were in. So moving on now, we have the pearl drill, which I'll load up for. Now the pearl drill, we have two and two. Do the reload three, and then one at the top, and we're gonna be at three meters, so it's pretty close. Four round mag with another mag on deck. So we'll be right about here. Stand by. All right, I had five rounds in the first mag, which I thought was four, but uh, that's why I hesitated after my reload. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be doing a slide lock reload. That was 577, clean but with a non-slide lock reload. So let's go ahead and put four rounds into this one. There we go. Now we're set up to this mag or this, this drill properly. 577 was the last one. Let's go ahead and see if we can beat that with the slide lock. Stand by. There we go. That's a clean run at 497. So sub five second pearl drill and they're all in there. That's a line burner, everything else is in. Two in the tip, six in the middle part, and three in the, the rocket boosters at the bottom. <laughs> um, now we're gonna run the .1 Tactics, Cole Sanders. Donovan's a good friend of mine, 
And I always like running these cold sanders because they are a challenge. Obviously, we're not running them cold. We're pretty warm right now. Uh, so we're going to do three, three, hit a reload on the move up, and then do um, one, one, two, one, one. Now, the best part of Donovan's drill is we start at seven yards and we work our way up during the shooting portion. I like shooting on the move, so let's go ahead and run this three, three, reload, stand by. All right, we've got one out right down here. I pulled this one right after the reload. Let's go ahead and run her again. See if we can get a clean run. That was a 818. Pass time on that is 11.5 with an expert time of eight seconds. So almost made the eight second time, but not quite. Let's do it again. Stand by. There we go, that's a clean run at 7.5, 750. We got one, two, three, four in. All those are in, all those are in, all those are in. So that is a clean run on the V1 standards from Point One Tactics. Now, let's go ahead and put up some fresh ones with the V2 standards. Now, the V2 cold standards are a little bit different because we're working backwards and shooting, and then we do a reload, slide lock again, and then we work forward and shoot. So we're gonna start off with a six round mag three yards and six rounds to the slide lock, hit the reload two and two, and then moving forward two and two on the P1T logos. Stand by. All right, we are clean in the middle. Clean here, clean here, clean here, but I pulled one shot there. So that was a 737. Let's do her again, see if we can clean that up a little bit. Another common misconception with 2011s, especially these you know, high-end Atlas guns, is that you have to have everything perfectly tuned, that they're not really reliable. Um, I'm dropping these mags into sugar sand, which is obviously not ideal, but it's what I've got. I don't have turf. Uh, and all you need to do is shake them out, blow them out, make sure they're cleaned out enough. Um, they don't have to be perfect. And obviously they're running. So they don't have to be you know, babied around. Now, am I gonna do a mud test with this? No, I'm not gonna do a mud test. I'm not gonna throw this into a big mud puddle, dunk the, the dirt, the, the gun into the sand. I'm not gonna toss it behind the berm and see what happens. You do wanna treat these things well, but they don't have to be babied and they're not unreliable. You're gonna see, I put a little bit of Radco CLP on here. Court, through the course of a day, we're gonna shoot a thousand rounds. Probably not gonna to have to put any more lube on. The EOS didn't require any more. It ran 100%, uh, we're at probably 1500 rounds right now on that without putting any lube on it. So let's go ahead and run this uh, V2 drill one more time. Stand by. There we go, that's a clean run. We've got all six hits in here. We got four hits, four hits, one and one. Well, two in there. That was a 658. Experts eight seconds. I will take that run every day of the week. Now to keep track of these rounds effectively, I wanna make sure all the mags are empty before we reload them. So I got four rounds left in here. Those are four hits on that paster. I'll take that. All right, we're gonna do a little walk back drill and just see how far back we can go while getting our hits here. Oh God, there's a target. Kind of fun to shoot steel from a long way off. We're about uh, 40 yards here. Still going. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, we're at 60 yards. 
So let's go ahead and see what we can do at 60. Stand by. One twenty nine. Let's push it back. All right, we are eighty five yards here. Stand by. One forty three at eighty five. Let's push it back some more. We are now at one fifteen. Let's see. Stand by. 115, a 157 for a shot. That's not bad. Oh. All right, 115. Let's push it farther back. All right, we are at 152. Stand by. 어, push it right over top. Let's try that again. Stand by. Oh! That was right on the edge. So we're getting the hits, but I want to get that off the draw. Stand by. That was a 176 draw to hit. At uh, 152 yards, let's keep on going. There's the gator. See him sitting out? I wanna catch him. All right, we're at 205 here. 205 yards, stand by. Oh, I thought that was for sure good. Guess I gotta come up a little bit here. Yep, let's try again, stand by. Nope, 200 is a pretty fur piece. Two fifteen for the 200, took a couple tries, but uh, that's a small target, let's try it again. Nope, pulled that one. Well, let's push it farther back, because why not? 265 here, I wanna push it back to 300. Let's see if we can smack something that far. All right, we are at 305 right here. Let's see, that's a small target with a red dot. Stand by. I did get one hit, but I'm aiming about eight feet above my berm. Let's see what we can do from the holster. Stand by. Nope. Let's try that again. Stand by. Oh, that was right off the head. Right there. Let's try it again. 182. Stand by. Right off the edge. Just over top. Okay, 300, <laughs> that's a poke. Uh, was not, I got a couple hits on it. Um, wasn't able to get one out of the holster. As you saw, a lot of reps trying to get that one out of the holster. We got it out of the 200 and everything inside of that, no problem. But uh, yeah, 300 just seemed to be Myself, I had a Celsius and a coffee earlier, so maybe a little jittery. Um, and then just trying to get the hit on the steel. So let's go top these off again. All right, one of my favorite drills is the accelerator. You guys probably know this already, but I love this drill because it forces throttle control, forces target transitions, and it's just a really good drill to change things up. So we're gonna work 
close to far. We have three targets. We got one at about seven, one at about uh, 17, and then one back at 25-ish. So uh, that 25-yard target is obviously a tuxedo. It's a skinny target. So let's see if we can run this and get some good drills here. Stand by. All right, let me, I have my dot still way low from when we were shooting 300. Now we got it up. Let's go ahead and run that again. Two alpha, two alpha, and can't tell the back one. Stand by. A little choppy on that transition to the back with a Charlie in the black. Stand by. All right. This gun shoots real nice. Real nice. Time to reload again. All right, it's finally time. We're gonna run the log, all right? I've always wondered how many rounds is it gonna take to chop down a fence post. We got some uh, flat nose army, I think it's 1152 ball, something like that. Let's just see exactly how many rounds we got. So James, put the counter on this thing. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's a miss, so it doesn't count. <laughs> all right. It's almost there. I keep on seeing rounds that are going through the, the gap in the middle there, and it's about to go. Let's see. <laughs> well, it broke at some point. James is gonna have to figure out when he stops counting. But I just kept on shooting it because every time it broke more, it started getting closer together. And now it's it's officially broken in half. Now, I do feel like we should take out those blocks though. All right guys, we're gonna take a brief intermission while we go ahead and break this video into two parts because a thousand rounds all at one time is a lot. So if you wanna see the second half of this video where we compare the Apollo to my Erebus and the Athena and the Eos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you for the second half.